Hi, I'm Dr. West, and we're going to talk briefly about mommy makeovers. Uh, mommy makeover procedures are super common, one of the most popular things that we do. Uh, the first question people ask is, what does it really mean? So it's a term that somebody coined uh, many years ago, uh, and it's pretty clever because it involves all the things that a patient would have after having kids. So typically, mommy makeover surgeries involve some kind of breast surgery, some kind of belly surgery, and then usually some liposuction of certain areas. So for breast surgery, uh, that can involve something really simple like breast implants. So that's typically going to be for somebody who likes the shape of their breasts, the breasts haven't dropped yet, and they're just looking for more volume. You can usually do something really simple like place implants and get a really nice outcome. For other patients, if the breasts have dropped, um, what often what will happen is during pregnancy, the breasts will enlarge. Uh, whether or not the patient, you know, patient breastfeeds, just the time that they're expanded um, will create more skin. And then uh, when the patient's done, uh, either with their pregnancy or breastfeeding, the breasts tend to deflate. So when a patient comes in and their breasts are sitting on their belly, then we're talking about things like implants and a lift, or sometimes just a lift, depending on what the patient's goals are. But that covers sort of the range of procedures we do for the breast. For the belly, uh, what a tummy tuck typically involves in is an incision that we place really low at the level of where a C-section scar would be, but it's usually a little bit longer, often goes hip to hip. And we cut the skin out from just above the top of the belly button all the way down. We pull the skin down so that we can hard hide that scar really nicely in the vast majority of clothes, bathing suits, so that it's really subtle. Um, while in addition to cutting out the skin, we also take that opportunity to fix the rectus muscles. So your six pack muscles run this way, up and down. And when you're, when you're young, the muscles are sort of touching, they're nice and close together. Pregnancy tends to drive those muscles apart so you get this gap that we call rectus diastasis. And that kind of creates more of a pooch of the belly. So you look at your profile in the mirror and say, okay, this is sticking out, I don't like that anymore. So the rectus diastasis repair will bring those muscles back together and give you back that flat profile. Um, then the other component that we, we talked about earlier is usually liposuction. So typically when we flatten out somebody's belly with a tummy tuck, we, if we just flatten the belly, the fat that's on the sides, the flanks and the love handles tends to stick out more and become more apparent. So what we all, what we usually do is do liposuction of the lower back and the flanks. That really helps to define that hourglass shaped look and it, it tends to blend much more nicely with that flat belly that we've created. Um, in terms of getting ready for surgery, um, it's goal weight, I think it's best for patients to be pretty close to the, the weight that they're gonna stay at for a long time. So I'm not a big believer in say, losing 50 pounds just to do surgery and then gaining that weight back. You wanna be at a, at a pretty stable weight for you. Uh, if you're in the middle of a weight loss journey, I think that coming in to, to start planning surgery with, when you're within about 10% of that goal weight, or let's say about 10 to 15 pounds, if you're 30 pounds away, 40 pounds away, I always tell people, take the time, get closer to your weight. As you get closer to your weight, you're gonna create more skin laxity. The more loose skin you create, the more we can take out and contour for you. Um, so people don't like how that deflated skin looks, but it, it allows us to do a, a more aggressive surgery for you. Um, in terms of what, the, you know, what to expect, uh, the surgery takes, depending on what combination of the things we're doing, it can be anywhere from five to eight hours. Uh, we typically do it as an outpatient. Patients go home the same day. Uh, we see you a day after surgery, and then we'll usually see you at a one week, one month, three month, six month follow up. We do put restrictions on patients after surgery. So uh, we don't let you shower for the first two days. After two days, you can take a shower, get everything wet. We don't like patients to soak in water for about four weeks. Uh, people always ask about time off work. So it kind of depends on what your work is. If you work from a desk and you don't have to exert a lot of force all day, you could probably do that kind of work within a week or two. If you have a more active job, some of our nurses and people who are on their feet a lot, people who are lifting, it often takes more like six weeks to get back to, to, to doing your, your, the full spectrum of your job. Um, we don't let people exercise for about six weeks. You really need that, that muscle repair to, to solidify before you can do that. So no gym for six weeks, but we let our patients walk up as much as they want to. Um, it, in general, I would say it's one of the procedures that we have that has one of the highest satisfaction rates. It's a procedure where everybody comes in uh, and is so happy that they did it. It tends to be a really transformative for sur surgery. Um, it's a really good way of helping um, moms recover their confidence uh, in how they dress. Um, and because they get a flatter belly, they restore the fullness to their breasts that they often lose um, during pregnancy. Uh, and it's a chance to really uh, contour the body and get a, a really pretty outcome. So it's a really gratifying surgery. Um, you know, patients are always happy they did it. It's a procedure we really like to perform and I think we do a really nice job doing it.